it certainly matters. And uh, to tell you what's happening here, it's, it's an unprecedented situation. This is the first time in the modern era or probably in the entirety of Apple's 40 plus year history where the company is being forced to stop sales of one of its core products in the United States. That core product being the Apple Watch Series 9 and the Apple Watch Ultra 2. Those make up probably 80 plus percent of all Apple Watch sales, the two newest models. They only sell three models, so two of the three models are impacted here. It was a patent dispute with the company in Southern California called Mossimo, and the International Trade Commission of the US ruled that Apple is violating two of Mossimo's patents related to blood oxygen saturation, right? That's the app on the Apple Watch. You click it, it'll tell you your blood oxygen. Most people are looking for a percentage between 95% and 100%. That's in violation, two things happening, a cease and desist on Apple being able to sell the watch in the US, as well as an import ban, an injunction, so they can no longer import Apple watches manufactured outside of the US. All Apple watches are built outside of the US for those uh, watching at home. So that's the fundamental issue there, right? So starting on Christmas day, the end of the day, December 25th, the Apple watch sales in the US, are no more when it comes to the Ultra 2 and the Series 9. Now, given that we're talking now and it's Thursday morning, starting at 3 p.m. Eastern time, the Apple Watch will no longer be sold on Apple's online store. Apple retail stores in the U.S., they have about 270 of them. They're closed Christmas Day. So December 24th, Christmas Eve, is going to be the last day of in-store retail sales. Now, for those who still want to buy an Apple Watch before the end of the year, maybe for themselves or a gift or what have you, Apple's not allowed to tell you this for legal reasons, but I can tell you, you can still get one at Best Buy, Target, wherever they're sold other than Apple retail stores. What's the history between Apple and Massimo? I'm so curious how Apple got involved in a, a patent dispute. I mean, you think of Apple, one of the largest, most important companies. How, how could something like this happen to Apple? Yeah, so Massimo actually sued Apple uh, in 2020, in January 2020, related to 10 patents on health sensing technology, right? Then in September 2020, Apple introduced the Apple Watch Series 6. That was the first Apple Watch that includes the blood oxygen feature. Now, Massimo, they're known uh, for their contributions and patents related to blood oxygen. So they preemptively sued Apple in anticipation of this watch coming out. Then once the watch came out, they filed an injunction claim with the International Trade Commission of the US asking for the watch sales to be banned. Now that was filed in 2021. That is not actually going into effect until like I said, the end of the day, Christmas day. So it took two years and change for it actually to go into effect. Massimo says they met with Apple 10 years ago, back in 2013, before the first Apple watch was introduced. Apple promised them some sort of partnership or discussed hiring them or licensing from them. In the end, what Apple did is they ended up hiring about 20 to 25 of their individual engineers and executives, hired them to come work at Apple, offered them more significant salaries, and they worked on the Apple Watch without Apple needing to partner with Massimo. So Massimo considered this a trade secret violation, so they sued Apple over that. In addition, to this hire, these hiring concerns, plus the patent concerns that have been ongoing now, uh, the first lawsuit, like I said, in the beginning of 2020. And now this is the ultimate uh, pushback against Apple, this injunction and cease and desist. Now, what I will tell you is the lawsuit related to the trade secret situation, that actually ended a few months ago and ended in a hung jury. So these two things, while related, the same companies, uh, this ITC ruling was able to happen uh, exclusive away from the lawsuit. Uh, Mark, what is Apple saying in response here? Yeah, Apple is saying that they're going to take every legal method possible to get the Apple Watch back on sale. They're complying with the order. Uh, they believe it wouldn't be so hot if they didn't comply. Uh, what I'm hearing is that Apple is trying to fix this via a software update. So that software update uh, has been in development now for several weeks. Uh, what needs to be done is they need to test it. They need to get some sort of uh, testing done related to regulatory, given that the Apple Watch is in some cases used uh, for health purposes, right? So there's an extra layer of testing that needs to be done internally. Uh, the blood oxygen feature is not regulated, so they don't have to deal with the healthcare regulators or the FDA. But what they need to do is get approval from the US Customs Agency. They need to submit that software update to the agency. The agency has to review it, and then they make the final determination of if the cease and desist and the import ban should be lifted or not. When do you expect 
to see this actually hit Apple's earnings, Apple stock price. I mean, I'm looking at um, the HCP function on the Bloomberg terminal right now. I see that this week is looking to be its first down week in over seven weeks, a seven week win streak. This will be the first down week down about 1.5% right now. But when do we actually see this come up in the price action? Yeah, so the, the the sales and the revenue uh, for the first quarter, right, that runs through the end of December, so December uh, 30th or 31st. So I don't anticipate an impact on Apple's revenue that they're going to announce for Q1. They'll, they'll, they'll announce those numbers at the tail end of January or at the beginning of February. But what I could tell you is that they're going to probably get impacted on their Q2 or Q3, depending on how long this rolls for. I would anticipate a several hundred million dollar headwind here, uh, which is not extraordinarily material to Apple, but certainly is worth discussing. And it is the difference between a growth quarter and a non-growth quarter, right? All you have to do to grow is uh, generate $1 more than you did in the quarter of the year prior, right? So if you're down several hundred million or a couple billion, uh, you're not going to get that flexibility and you might have a down quarter when you otherwise would have had an up quarter. But the big question is how long this is going to take. Uh, my guess is probably around three months, unless we have some surprising stay order from the federal government or some sort of last minute veto but I, I don't really expect either of those. Mark, what's the uh, for what are you looking for out of Apple in 2024? Is there, are there any products that we need to be, need to be on the lookout for? Uh, any new services that you think they might try to pursue? Any any anything else that's on your horizon? Well, the Vision Pro, right? That's all anyone in the Apple world is talking about right now. That's their first mixed reality headset. I don't think it's going to be a big revenue driver, but it's certainly going to be awesome. Uh, the other big thing is Apple. When is that? Finally do, do, do we know when that's going to happen? The Vision Pro, that's going to come out by by February, so okay. probably at the tail end of January. Or now, February. are you going to be one of those tech geeks that's going to get one of these? Uh, yes. Yes. I will be <laughs> Spend the whole paycheck at, on yes. a Vision Pro. He's going to expense it. Who's kidding who? All right, so that's coming up in February. That's interesting. Is Now, how's the company positioning that thing? Well, they're not. They haven't talked much about it since the introduction uh, in June. It's pretty nascent. Like you said, it's pretty expensive. Uh, with tax, it's probably coming up against a uh, $4,000 threshold Whoa. for most people. And so it is pretty pricey. I think the big marketing push is going to start sort of more in the middle of the year. Obviously, when they release cheaper models, that's going to be a significant development. You asked about services. I think you're going to see uh, Apple walk into the generative AI space this year. You'll oh, see okay. introductions in June around Gen AI, integrating large language models into the iPhone. So that's going to be a quite significant initiative for the company too, even though they're going to be about a year and a half behind everyone else.